Hi, I'm Omer Sternberg. I'm uh, the director of uh, Hamazin that's uh, participating in the Berlinale Shorts. Hi, welcome to the Tadi TV. My name is Jean Borgobak, and this time we are discussing the film Listening In by Omer Sternberg. Hi, welcome to the festival. It's very lovely to have you here. Um, let's talk about your approach, how you approach this topic, because the very exciting and interesting thing about it is that there is a lot of um, visual denial in it. We, we don't get to see a lot of things when it is primarily a very visual medium that we picked. Um, so there is a, a, a lot of tension between that. Uh, can you talk a bit, a bit about this this approach that you take in the film? Yeah, um, I think uh, like the decision to separate the visual from the sound. Yeah, um, it has like, um, of course, like a functional meaning, like in, in the storytelling and yes, in the way right. the movie works. But it also has like a political meaning, like the things we see and the things we hear. We don't feel the same. Uh, um, affection, the same sympathy for those kind of things. So I try to like make the audience think um, what he knows and what he's imagining. Yeah. And, um, and it's also like a saying about the, the media and the way um, we consume it and the way we understand things about the reality. So I think the decision is from that place. It's also political, but it also has like yeah. a storytelling meaning. On it. Right. Let's talk about the, the, the political context in which this story particularly takes place. Can you shed a bit of light on that? Uh, yeah, so uh, actually the idea for the film came uh, when I came across a letter of um, a few soldiers who refused to keep doing their uh, military service in this yeah. intelligence unit because uh, what, they say, what they saw as uh, crimes against the Palestinian uh, society and uh, the usage of um, personal information yeah. in order to like, uh, make um, security decisions or security actions. And uh, when I talked uh, to a Palestinian friend, he told me that from his side, the, he's, he's a gay Palestinian and he knows like, um, there's always a chance someone is listening to what he says and someone is following him and knows what he does. And um, in that way, I felt like um, on the two sides of uh, this conflict because uh, um, I'm an Israeli and I served in the military and I uh, um, care about the security of Israel and the security of uh, Jewish people and everything, but I'm also a gay and a queer and I have, uh, I'm a part of a, the LGBT community, um, whether they're Palestinians or Israeli, it doesn't matter. Um, so um, I think in, from that conflict and from this question of who I am and what makes me more me, like am yeah. I an Israeli, am I gay, are these two things can go together, are those, so this is the, the political yeah. meaning for, for yeah, me. Yeah, right. I mean, we see this conflict, uh, that the main protagonist goes through this conflict as well, and he is also torn between um, feelings, maybe affection for, for the people that, um, that he's listening to, but then at the same time there is this sense of duty that he that he has to comply with um, and that was a very interesting tension in the film especially how what he was listening to really started to affect him and he really started to get involved in their lives even if it was obviously not directly so can you talk a bit about this positioning of the of the character in the film yeah I think it's pretty much what I just said that um, for me I wasn't in this kind of unit and I didn't the this kind of uh, service, yeah. but uh, um, it's really this uh, idea of um, the way we um, declare our identity and the way we like um, we figuring out who we are. Like uh, there's a, a gay cliche of coming out of the closet, and I always knew in some place. So I tried to make this uh, cliche like take it to 
the national identity and not only for the sexual identity. Right. Like the way you're figuring out your own national identity and the way you have to choose whether you're a part of your nation, even if it does like cruel things or crimes or, uh, or you're just um, who you are, even if you're alone and you're... Yeah, yeah, no, it, of course, it, it, it all makes sense. Um, you made the choice in the film to use a lot of close-ups. It's, it's very, very prominent in the film, and I was wondering what motivated that aesthetic choice. Yeah, uh, me and the director of photography, uh, Shiri Kuban, we wanted to uh, like uh, make a sense of uh, alienation from the, uh, from the place he's in. We wanted to make him alone, we wanted to make him uh, because he's gay and because he's listening to these um, conversations that are the exact opposite of the masculine um, uh, environment of the army. Uh, so um, this was the idea, to make him a part of this, this culture and uh, the things he's in. Um, when uh, we did decide to, to, to shoot him with, uh, with other people, with other people. So, uh, it really had a, a lot of meaning for us in the way that he made his own decision and where does he take it. Yeah, even though it was also interesting to see because sometimes it even felt like that those are the moments when he really is alone, <laughs> when he was shot with others and it seemed like that he's not that alone when he was listening in to these to these conversations. Um, but another thing what was what was particularly interesting is that so he's listening into someone, he's like following someone without him being seen and without him being noticed. And it felt like that it had a really interesting connection with the position of the viewer of the mm -hmm. film, who is also watching on, but is not being looked back at. So there is this safe position. And I don't know if you had any kind of thoughts about this or if you have uh, anything to share about this interesting parallel between. Yeah, of course I did. I think like. Uh... Uh, there's a saying that uh, every film is also about filmmaking and not only about the things he talks about. So uh, um, I had uh, Nadav Lapid as my mentor. He won uh, the Berlinale list here, the Golden yeah. Bear. So uh, we really talked about uh, this um, subject a lot, like uh, yeah. the way these things tell us things about what is cinema, what is filmmaking, and uh, the way we, yeah. we watch someone, just, just the things he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, I was also curious to get your perspective as, as, a, as a young filmmaker, um, how do you see the whole uh, queer cinema landscape of today? Because, I mean, this is also a contribution to that, this, this movie, so I was, I was wondering what is your take on that, what is your, what is your perspective and your thoughts? Uh, I think it's, it's just wonderful cinema. I don't have anything bad to say about it because um, I think queer cinema is we have a lot of great, great films and uh, great directors and every, I, I really like, uh, I never think I'll have enough of uh, queer cinema and I never think it's getting repetitive because um, uh, when you see yourself on the screen it always matters and uh, when I was young and seeing gay people on the screen and, and, and knowing that, that someone knows me. <laughs> It's a great feeling and I, I think as we'll never have enough uh, films about uh, family or about love stories, so the queer films will always have stories to tell and yeah. I'll never get enough of it. <laughs> right. No, thank you so much and thank you for, for this film, which I think is a very important contribution, especially uh, with the political context that, that it touches upon. And thank you so much for the interview. Thank In you. the name of the Teddy TV and the Teddy Award, we wish you all the best for the Berlinale. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> Thanks.